Materials supplied by Microsoft Corporation may be used for internal review, analysis, or research only. Any editing, reproduction, publication, rebroadcast, public showing, internet or public display is forbidden and may violate copyright law. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to be here uh, to share with you some um, my research experience on uh, computer vision. Uh, actually, I'm not an expert on uh, cloud computing. I just use it to uh, conduct my research in computer vision and some, uh, some stuff of machine learning. Um, uh, my name is uh, Lin Liang. Uh, I come from the uh, Sun Yat-sen University uh, in Guangzhou. Okay, um, uh, the, the topic today is uh, uh, distributed, distributed visual model learning for large-scale object recognition. Okay, here we are. Uh, first, uh, we are talking about big data every day, uh, for now. Um, in the vision problem, uh, more seriously. Uh, for example, uh, there are six, six billion photos uploaded every day uh, to the Flickrs, and uh, we have uh, 60, uh, 72 hours per minute in YouTube. Then, today, maybe um, one morning, one billion smartphone users we, we capture photos every day maybe. So how to recognize to or process the big image data? One of the key techniques is to object recognition. Yeah. Um, also it involve, involves some um, business opportunities such as um, intelligence, surveillance, robotics, uh, mobile applications, and so um, because uh, today is not a, a special workshop on computer vision or machine learning, so just let me uh, briefly go through the background and motivation of, the, of my research. And then I will focus on how to uh, conduct the uh, compositional audio model for recognition in a distributed system. Um, I guess the people here uh, may have different research backgrounds, so I can go through step by step. Uh, first, um, uh, let me uh, introduce some uh, public data set on visual recognition. Uh, they are for they are the most f famous database in vision research. First is the Caltech 101, and another is the tiny image from MIT. They have uh, 18, uh, 8 million images. Then the um, Pascal VOC is a very challenge for uh, object recognition. And the last one is the uh, we are it's well known for now. ImageNet have a, it contains thousands of thousands of images. So we'll see how to conduct research on this kind of benchmark. Then uh, briefly, uh, there are four steps uh, in general uh, to uh, conduct uh, object recognition in computer vision. The first is image processing. Just like uh, imaging, denoising, enhancement, like this. Then the second step is very important. That is, that is we need to extract the low level features to represent the image. Then the third one, we need to perform pooling and coding to get a compact image representation. Then last, we need to construct the object model to do the recognition. Um, as an example here, the given image here, we, we can slide the sub window over the image and to judgment, to make decision whether the sub window includes the object we are interested in. Then, with our model, okay, well, we'll focus the model construction here. Um, first, we we'll, uh, also go through the other two steps in the pipeline. Uh, first, the low-level image features. Um, if you're doing some research in image analysis or vision, I guess many people know this kind of features, like SIFT, HOG, GAPO, thin image, like this. Uh, this feature are used to extract the invariance or important information from the image to represent uh, the pattern. 
Okay, uh, the, 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 the third step, coding and coding. Uh, one of the most famous object, uh, image representation is back of words model. Uh, with VQ coding, uh, originally proposed by Bray in MIT and then extended by VV from uh, Stanford. Uh, the key idea is, perform, is to perform clustering on an image patch and generate a set of a dictionary of you know, visual words we call. Uh, then we can represent each image use the uh, histogram, map the image into the histogram, the two the words. Then, we know the limitation of the back of words is to uh, re uh, the spatial information we, we do not. So the spatial pyramid kernel was developed to uh, extract feature from a different scale in image pyramid. So we can, um, the representation may be more expressive. Then uh, one of the four, uh, 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 famous techniques for coding and pulling is uh, uh, fast coding. Uh, it's still very hard today. Um, first, uh, uh, originally fast coding proposed to uh, replace the original visual words clustering by, uh, by coding an image patch with uh, uh, several video image patches. Then, this, this method has been extended by uh, Yukai in uh, 2010 uh, to iteratively to update the dictionary and update the coding efficiency. Uh, I, I, I just uh, go through some, uh, ignore some technical details. If you feel interested, we can refer the paper. Okay, the last step. Oh, we need to construct the expressive, very powerful model to do the recognition. Uh, there are three types of typical models in the literature. First is linear model, and the kernel model, and the compositional model. Um, the linear model is very traditional, and uh, uh, we used uh, uh, many years ago. Um, the basic idea is just to learn a discriminant function, and uh, we, it's uh, in a supervised manner. We need to collect features and uh, from the sample, uh, which are no their labels, positive or negative. Then we learn a discriminant function to predict in the training data. Uh, the basic assumption for the linear model is assume that the training data are linear separable. Actually, it's not all satisfied in real applications. So we, we, we know uh, the classification function is like this. And then F belongs to some family of functions. Uh, the, 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 the learning problem is uh, uh, it's a procedure to minimize the misclassification error. Then the traditional uh, linear model is a uh, linear SVM. I think, I guess, most people have the experience to use it. Um, the, the loss function in linear SVM is in this form. Uh, it's a stand, standard hinge loss. It's not hidden variable, no hierarchical structure. It's simple, fast, but low accuracy. accuracy. Then another popular model is kernel model. Uh, for example, we can kernelize the SVM loss function here by introducing some, some function like the Gaussian function. They can well extend the power, or improve the power of the model to uh, in a uh, very high dimensional feature space. It's some uh, uh, popular kernel function like Gaussian uh, multi-layer perception like this. By the way, um, but it's, the problem is uh, may not, they may not be very suitable for big data. We will see why, we will see the reason later on. Uh, <coughs> the third type of different model are compositional model. Also, we can call them public model. Uh, there is uh, uh, so a long story to, uh, to develop an expressive, powerful model for recognition. Uh, I will take an example for illustrating <coughs> why we need this kind of model. Uh, I refer to uh, my papers uh, for technical details. Here, for example, if we have two images like this, we see for the whole, the category of holes will uh, for complexity. 
pattern or object categories. Maybe they are in local needs. They have a very appearance variance. For example, different types of legs, different type of head. So maybe one single task file cannot be well handled the, the, the appearance variance. So we need to colonize, but colonize cannot be parallelized, distributed in system. So we, we, we need to decompose the model into the parts and to represent the like, deformable spatial deformations. In this model, we need we have three layer structures. First is an end node, root node, to switch multi-class classification. Um, the second la layer is uh, include end nodes to classify object as a whole. Then the third layer, all nodes structure alternatives to switch the different local classifier to find object parts. And also, when the leak node is a, lo is a local detector to, to localize object parts. Then also we need to incorporate a spatial coherency relationships between parts. So as a typical, very powerful, or com also very complex model. Then, um, here we are discussing how to uh, design and uh, distribute this, uh, uh, deploy this model into a distributed system. Uh, we, we, we take this, uh, we simplify it, uh, the model, for example. Um, typically, there are three components in this model, part, HOG feature, and later SVM. Okay, uh, I brief some. Um, uh, in the target function of the classification, there are two terms uh, different with the traditional SVM. The first is data term to represent the appearance variance for the object. Then the, the second term is a key in our model, is to incorporate the spatial information, structure information here. Um, so we have found this is the additional to the structure uh, to the original SVM, so we call them model as latent structure SVM. Then, for example, the data term, the first term is to represent the appearance information like the, the human head, the human body, human leg like this. And the second term, the spatial term, is to incorporate the layer structure, their deformation, layer layout, spatial layout like this. Then we can connect the so we can simplify to write the model in this form. Uh, that means the beta denote you know, the model parameter we are training, and the, the Poseidon in incorporate the, uh, represent the feature and the structure information, the Z. The Z is the latent variable, actually. So the problem is uh, become another more complex form. We need to, we, we need to, optimize the, the target function here. Uh, there are two parts. First, the beta are model parameters. It's very just like the traditional SVM. The other one is the latent variable Z to denoting the structure configuration of objects we need to. So what we say the problem is very computational expensive because we need to estimate the Z for each sample. For example, once we have thousands of thousand training samples for large scale object recognition, then we need to estimate Z for each sample. So that's why we need cloud computing for this problem. Okay. We see the, the traditional loss function becoming in this book is this term. Well once we estimate the uh, com computing the prediction function, we need to all to meanwhile estimate the latent variable. So the proce procedure of the optimization in contain two steps in iteration. First, pick best Z for each training sample. Second, optimize beta where gradient is for other traditional optimization methods. Then, here, uh, we, we are not, uh, uh, we are discussing a very uh, general uh, uh, solution on uh, distributed systems. It can be used either Windows Azure or other cloud computing architecture. But 
um, uh, we, we present a tall example here to demonstrate our system. Right? Uh, we take an uh, example of the past VOC 12,000. There, um, there are around 10,000 sharing samples and 20 object classes. Here we use um, 100 computers to train 20 models. Uh, note that uh, here the computers can be the real machine or the virtual machine on the Azure kind of other cloud computing architecture. Then the data are distributed in these computers and each of them store one training images, for example. Uh, so uh, <coughs> we render the computers from one to zero here. We call rank one to 20 computers are managers. Uh, we use them to update models to four class one to 20 and representative and handle other uh, calculation. Then we create 21 to 100 computers as workers. And then this the worker um, handle, uh, are used to handle calculations assigned by managers. So in this, in this uh, illustration, the rank of one, to 20 and the rest of machines. Then um, the 20 optimal models are stored in all computers, in all computers, as means all copies. And the two iterative optimization steps are first, pick back the, the, the latent variable to determine the structure configuration for each training samples. The step two, to optimize data, will some gradient descent like other optimization algorithm. First, uh, we know, the, for now, um, the step one was very uh, expensive in computing because we need to uh, uh, estimate for each training sample. Here we parallelize, uh, parallelize the step one. For each machine, we perform a detection on the, on the 100 samples stored in it with 20 models. Then, we collect the detection result. That is, that's mean that all the, the feature extraction and the uh, classification function. Uh, the, the, the feature detected where model I in all computers are transferred to the rank I computer, at least. We transpose the detection result from the other machine to the managers, so as to the Manages um, uh, the, the transformation among managers. Um, in step two, we perform the stochastic gradient descent algorithm on the rank one to twenty computers. For the rank i computer, the model parameters for class i are updated. Each updated model is sent back to the another ninety-nine computers like this. As new up, we update the model together in parallel form. Okay, uh, for now, the time of training a model in a single machine is around uh, 20 to uh, 30 hours. Uh, basically, it depends on the, uh, the positive sample numbers or the uh, hardware architecture. Uh, for now, the time for the training 20 models in distributed system is around 10 hours. <laughs> Interesting, we found the, increase, the improvement is not very much. You know? Uh, the average precision are almost the same. We, that is mean we, we don't uh, we don't lose any accuracy in the model for 20 uh, categories. Uh, parallel and single, we have the uh, almost the same precision reporting. So, what's the bottleneck in the system? Obviously, it's not a very uh, satisfying um, because. We found the bottleneck on the stochastic gradient descent. That means the set step two. We don't we don't parallelize the step two in practical. As that is because the the so, uh, because of the attributes of the, uh, the algorithm, it cannot be parallelized simply. So we, uh, the the alternative solution is we use the another optimization algorithm. Uh, like this kind of uh, Newton optimization to instead of <coughs> to replace the the, the original SGD. <coughs> uh, we 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 doing a toy example here. We found 
the time cost in each iteration for the, the Newton L B FGS is larger than SGP, as it needs to compute the gradient for all samples. But the, 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 this algorithm uses less iterations to get a better solution than SGP. The calculation for gradient can be parallel because we compute the gradient for all samples. So that was good for us. Uh, then we, we, we conduct the final uh, distributed system into uh, four steps. First, we, uh, for each computer, we calculate the gradient of the sample features. Uh, then we collect the gradient, the gradient calculated where model I in all computers are transferred into a ring I computer. And this step. Then the, the step three, for rank I computer, the model parameters for class I are updated. Each mo updated model is then sent back to the other 99 computers in this, in this illustration. Uh, actually, unfortunately, I cannot report the final result here because the experiments are still on pending because of what happened deadline uh, two weeks ago, uh, in two weeks. So uh, we are expecting a professional improvement on efficiency. That's um, approximately 100 times faster on a distributed system of 100 workstations. That's what we expect. Uh, okay. Thank you. 